Welcome to Ditch Auto. My name's Jared, and we're here with the Nikon D7200, and these are the top five settings that I changed initially when I got the Nikon D7200. The first thing that I did was go in and actually enable raw image capture. You do that by going into your photo shooting menu and scrolling down or up to image quality. Now, by default, your camera will be set to JPEG. You would want to shoot RAW because you would want a higher quality image that gives you more room for editing later on. Shooting in RAW definitely gives you more flexibility when adjusting the white balance and the exposure and all that good stuff with your photo. You would want to shoot RAW plus JPEG if you wanted two files, both your RAW file and your JPEG file. If you're interested in connecting your camera to your phone for sharing photos from your camera to your phone so that you can immediately edit them on your phone or upload them to social media, you will need to be shooting in some form of a JPEG mode, which is why I typically shoot in RAW plus JPEG. Shooting in RAW gives me the ability to have the nice version that I can edit on my computer, and getting that JPEG allows me to quickly share a photo on social media. It's really hard to go back and get a photo uh, and put your camera in JPEG mode so that you can get a photo that you wanted to share quickly. It's better just to shoot RAW plus small JPEG. SD cards are so large these days that we can capture both and still have plenty of room left over. So simply hit OK to select the image quality that you want We'll be shooting RAW plus JPEG, which is my preference. If you don't need that JPEG file, simply just choose NEF RAW and leave it at that. You'll be shooting RAW files. Uh, and if you don't need the ability to edit your photos uh, very much, then there's really no reason to shoot RAW in the first place. You can shoot JPEG. But my opinion is to shoot RAW, and then I also use that small JPEG so that I can share it to a smartphone. And if you want to know how to share it to a smartphone from this camera, check out the video that we did on Wi-Fi and NFC with the Nikon D7200. The link is in the description below. So the second thing I do is make sure that my autofocus settings are set to where I want them to be. I'll do that, and I'll show you by hitting Live View here. Um, and then there is a button on the side of the camera, this button right here next to your autofocus and manual focus switch. When you hold this button down, it allows you to quickly toggle between the different autofocus settings. Now in live view mode, all we're going to see is AFS and AFF. AFS is typically where I hang out. I like servo mode. That's essentially what this uh, autofocus mode is. And in servo mode, it allows your camera to refocus every time you press down the shutter button. Um, or in my case, when I press but down the button for back button focus. Servo mode makes it easier to do uh, focusing because it allows the camera to refocus when needed, as opposed to shooting in AFA single mode, where your camera is only gonna focus once. So especially when you're shooting continuous, where you hold down the shutter button and you, you uh, shoot a series of photos, you can't do that in AFA. You have to be in AFS for that. And actually, it won't let you choose AFS in live view mode. You actually have to turn off live view mode, look through the viewfinder of your camera, hold down this button, and then rotate the option. As a bonus tip to that, let me turn live view back on. When you hold down the button on the side of the camera, and you're rotating this switch here to toggle between the different autofocus modes. And then you rotate the, the rocker on the front of your camera, which is underneath your shutter button, to choose the different type, the, the focus type. You have wide, normal, uh, spot, and portrait. And so there are different focus modes that you have available here. And the best thing to do is to play with them and try them all out and see what works best for you. However, I typically go with AFS and then I choose the focal point because then I can toggle and move my focus point around. You can see my little box here moving around. And as I move the box around, I can tell the camera exactly where I want focus to be so that there's no mistaking because cameras sometimes do that with autofocus. They make mistakes. And I like having my AF point that I can move around. Uh, sure, it's not as quick as using wide and not as flexible, but for me, when I'm shooting photos, I want that focus to be tack sharp and exactly where I want it, and that's why I set my camera up that way. The third tip is to make sure that active delighting is disabled. Now, active delighting is a feature that allows Nikon to add a little bit of kind of fluffiness to your photo or enhancement to your photo right from within the camera. That could be good or bad. Now, if you're wanting to share your photos directly from the camera to the internet, maybe the delighting effect might not be a bad idea. 
But if you're wanting to edit your photo and have full control over your photo, you definitely don't want your camera to be doing any of the editing for you. So to get to that setting, there's a quick way to get to it by holding down this I button here and then letting off. And then you can toggle down until you get to active delighting. You'll notice that I already have it off, but we have low, normal, high, extra high, and auto. Uh, so another way to get to that setting is to go in back to your photo shooting menu and just scroll down to active delighting and then set that setting there to either auto, extra high, normal, high, normal, low, or off. Setting it to off means that no inside camera processing is gonna happen, and it's gonna give you the most pure image that you can edit later in an editor such as Adobe Lightroom. The next setting that I customize is turning off beep. I don't like my camera beeping. I am a professional shooter, and when I'm shooting weddings or other events, I don't want my camera beeping to confirm every little thing that I do. So to turn off the beep, you go into your custom settings, go into shooting display, under D1, choose beep, and make sure that the volume is turned to off. You also have three different settings, and you can hear it gives you a preview of those settings, but I definitely leave it to off because I don't need that to happen. There are visual displays all over the camera to show you when something is focus, in focus or anything like that. For example, when you're shooting and looking through the viewfinder, in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a green light letting you know when an item is in focus. When you're shooting in live view, your focus box will light up green when your object is in focus. So there's no need to have a beep happening, which is distracting. Now I shoot a lot of video with my DSLR cameras, and so I wanna make sure that my video settings are correct so that when I switch from photo to video mode, my camera is ready to capture video. Now I do that by going into the movie shooting menu and making sure that my frame size frame rate is set where I want it to be. Now if I'm shooting action and I may want to make a slow motion video out of it, I would wanna make sure that I'm shooting at 60p, which is at 1920 by 1080 60p. If I'm not shooting action and I want a more cinematic look, I may go down to 1920 by 1080 at 24p. Now you can always make these changes later when you're editing your video, but most will say that it's best to get it right in camera based on what you're doing. So I set my frame rate. I also set my movie quality to high quality. I want the best quality video that I'm able to get. And I set my microphone sensitivity to manual. By default, your microphone sensitivity is gonna be on auto. And whether you're using the built-in microphone inside of the camera, or you have an external microphone such as a Rode video mic, you'll want to take manual control over your audio. Otherwise, when there are dips in your audio, such as not a person stops talking or whatever noise that you, were, you had your audio level set properly for, when that goes away, your camera will raise the audio levels trying to find audio and you'll get a lot of background noise and fuzz and stuff like that. So it's best to put your camera into manual mode with audio. The last thing I do is go and set my picture control to something flat. The reason that I do that is because a flat picture is much more flexible of an image for post-production, which means that when I color correct my video in a video editor such as Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro X, I have more room to move in both directions, both with my exposure and my contrast. So there's lots that you can do with a flat image, but if you're not interested in that, simply leave it on standard, or you can even play with neutral or vivid to see what those do. But by default, I always move down to flat and select flat because that gives me the most flexible image that I have in post-production. Lastly, one of the options that I really like about the Nikon D7200 is its ability to give you feedback when you are previewing the images that you just captured. Now, when you're looking at your images on a small screen, it's really important to know that your image was in focus. And though it may look to be in focus, it's even more important to know if that focus was perfect or not so that you have the opportunity to grab another photo. So I go into my settings, I go into playback menu, and under playback display options, I choose focus point. Now you're gonna have to hit the right side arrow here in order to select it, and then hit okay. Then when you go and preview your images, it will show the AF points that were on when that image was captured. Now depending on which setting you're using on your camera, uh, as far as your autofocus goes, this could be completely different but it will definitely let you know quickly which part of your image was where it was focused and where. And that makes it much easier for you to determine if an image was in focus. 
Now, I don't use this all the time because it can be annoying. I typically use this in instances where I don't have a lot of time to see if I got the image that I wanted to get. Alternatively to doing something like that, you can turn that off. You can go into your image preview. So let's look at our image, one of our images here. And then of course you can hit the magnifying glass and zoom in on your image to see if you got the focus that you were looking for. Now as a bonus feature that I'll link to in the description below, using back button focus definitely is one of the things that I set up on my camera, but it takes a little bit more time, so I made a specific video for setting up back button focus. Essentially what that does is it disables your ability to initiate autofocus from holding the shutter button down momentarily, and it repositions it to this back button. The reason that you would wanna do that is so that you can focus on taking pictures with this button and focus on focusing with the back button. It limits the opportunity for mistake when you go to pre-focus on an image and then let off and then go to pre-focus again and your camera accidentally focuses on the wrong thing. So make sure to check out the link in the description below on how to enable back button focus. So thanks so much for checking out this video series on the D7200. I hope that you learned a few things about the camera and if you did, please subscribe to our channel as it helps support us and it keeps you notified when we come out with new videos. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below so that we can communicate with you. And thanks so much for checking out Ditch Auto.